Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Vince here. I passed the Security Plus last weekend and I wanted to let you guys know how it went. So I'm going to try to answer all the questions that I typically get on these kind of videos like how long did I study? What did I use to study? How was the actual experience of the exam and the difficulty level and everything like that? So thanks for being here and let's get into it. All right, so first off, what did I use to study? My recommendation would be that whatever you do, do it intentionally and use as much of your brain as possible while you're doing it because I don't know about you, but I tend to get into the habit of putting on some videos where I'm intending to learn and study and then completely distracting myself by going on my phone or browsing other websites while those videos are playing in the background. I would say this is the worst return on investment of your time. That being said, I'm going to list the resources that I used in order of most useful uh, to less useful, most useful to less useful. So the number one tool that I used was um, Professor Master's videos on YouTube. These are free and they comprehensively cover the exam learning objectives. So they, he goes through every single learning objective for the Security Plus um, and he covers them with videos and PowerPoint slides and gives short explanations. I wouldn't say that this is um, the only tool that I would recommend using, but it de for me, it was definitely um, one of the most helpful ones. I paired Professor Messer's videos with Jason Dion's practice tests. And just so you guys know, I do have a lot of other videos of taking some of these practice tests and going over the questions and answers and kind of explaining my thought process and how I'm answering them. Um, but the way that I like to do it is I would watch Professor Messer's videos the first time, not trying to learn everything, not trying to memorize anything, just getting an idea of the information that is covered on the exam. Then I would go and take one of the practice tests to get a baseline of my knowledge and how I measure up in those different areas of knowledge. And after seeing which questions I missed and which sections that I was weak on, I would go back and study those same sections over again and make sure that I understood all the material that was being covered. One of the things that helped me to pass the Security Plus was that I obtained my bachelor's degree recently and I had a minor in cybersecurity. So I had taken classes in cybersecurity. Unfortunately, I wasn't uh, as disciplined in those classes as I was in studying for this exam. Otherwise, it would have been even easier for me to pass the exam. In fact, my cyber, one of my cybersecurity classes had us buy the CertMaster Learn and CertMaster Labs for our course material. Like the teacher didn't even assign homework or lessons really. They just had us go through the CertMaster uh, material, which was great because um, they were intentionally setting us up to pass the Security Plus. However, I did that over a year before I actually took the exam. So when it came time to study for the exam, I had to do a lot of supplemental studying and reviewing of material that I had previously learned and then forgotten or didn't learn very well at all. So if you have the ability to get a hold of the CertMaster Learn and CertMaster Labs material, I would definitely recommend this. However, it's the most expensive um, tool that, you, that I could find. I think it's a couple hundred dollars um, for that for that packet. So it's a, they have online labs um, with virtual machines and it's super helpful in understanding what CompTIA is looking for because it's produced by the same people that make the test, right? So obviously their material is going to be on point, but it costs a lot. So if, if that's a factor for you, you just don't want to spend that much um, to, to study. <laughs> Uh, there's definitely a lot of other resources that you can access for free or for uh, for very cheap that are more than enough to get you through the Security Plus. Another thing that I did that was helpful but not really active studying was I listened to a podcast called Darknet Diaries by Jack Resider. These are true stories from the dark side of the internet. I'm Jack Resider. This is Darknet Diaries. I highly recommend this. Um, it's very entertaining. And if you're interested in the world of cybersecurity, if you're interested in hacking, uh, Darknet Diaries is super entertaining. And he's a great investigator. And he, he does all his research and figures out these stories about um, all these real world things that have happened. Um, and he does a great podcast on it. So I definitely recommend listening to Darknet Diaries. Um, and you'll probably absorb more than you realize just by 
understanding like real world real world situations and how hacking plays out how cybersecurity plays out in real world situations so he'll interview a lot of um, hackers a lot of red teamers some blue teamers uh cybersecurity researchers and all kinds of things side note this is the first time i did not use mike myers to study for one of the comptia exams i just ended up running out of time so i didn't get to look at his resources speaking of time how long should you study for the Security Plus? Well, again, it's going to be different for everyone, and it totally depends on where you're starting from. So the way I would like to say this is I studied passively for about a year because I was in school and I was learning about subject material related to the exam, but I studied actively for about two months. So that was, you know, me sitting down, not, not every day, but... Uh, sitting down frequently and uh, giving it at least an hour of studying and um, watching videos, and and when I when I watch videos the right way, uh, I'm taking notes and I'm writing down any new concepts. You know, like so I've already taken a practice test and I saw that I did really bad on the authentication section. So I go back and watch Professor Messer's authentication videos and I write down anything that's new to me, anything that stands out that I haven't heard of before. And maybe I Google around and read some uh, articles about certain protocols or, or whatever it is that I need to learn. Now on other sections of the test where I feel like I really understand the material well, I would try to force myself to watch it um, because you never know what you're gonna pick up uh, from another source, like somebody else might know something that you don't know. And even though you think you have a really good grasp on malware, um, maybe there's, you know, a new class of malware, or maybe there's a new way that malware is being used that you don't know about. So I really try to force myself to watch every single video. But what I would do if I felt like I had a good grasp on a section is I would just play it on like 1.75 or 2x speed. And that way I could still kind of review the material. And then if anything sticks out where I'm like, oh, I haven't heard of that, then I would kind of pay special attention to that. But for the most part, I would just sort of review and make sure like, okay, yeah, I know about that. I've heard about that. Um, and I feel confident about, you know, answering questions um, on a test about this material. So if you want to know, if you want a straight answer for how long you should study, uh, I, I think the general recommendation is about three months. But really, it depends on how hard you're studying. It depends on your previous knowledge and previous experience. So mm, there is no straight answer. How was the actual exam experience? Well, I took the exam online. It's proctored. So they have your microphone on, they have your camera on, and they watch you the entire time while you're taking the test. And no one is allowed to enter the room and no one is allowed to speak to you and you're not allowed to speak. So that, that last rule is probably the hardest one for me to follow because when I am, when I am trying to understand a test question, I, I, it's like impulse instinct to read it out loud to myself and, and that helps me to understand it. So actually when I took my A plus, uh, the very first proctored online test, they almost failed me because I kept talking to myself and I was talking to myself through the questions and reading the questions out loud. And they, they started chatting to me and they were like, uh, you're not allowed to be talking. And I was like, okay. So then I started like whispering, like what is software as a service? And then they chatted me again. They said, if, if you keep talking, we're going to fail your exam. So don't talk to yourself. Don't let anyone into the room. Other than that, Online proctored exams are the way to go, in my opinion. Um, oh, also you don't get bathroom breaks, but I think that's like with every exam. The reason I, I am like, yeah, online proctor is awesome is because uh, I had to go to another state on very short notice to visit family and I was able to take my exam over there. So if I'd had my exam scheduled at a testing center, obviously I wouldn't have been able to take the test at that testing center since I was in a different state. But because it was online, I could just take my laptop with me and do it over there. The other reason is uh, you can reschedule your exams. Um, you could probably do that with a testing center too. So my experience with the exam was I was holed up in a little office and I was basically at like a family reunion and my entire extended family was in the other room outside of this door and uh, they were talking and they were singing and they were laughing and uh, it was really hard to focus. I actually literally covered my ears with my hands at some points when I was trying to read like hard questions that I needed to really focus to understand. So I definitely recommend finding a nice quiet isolated place to take your exam. If you're going to do it online and proctored, uh, try not to go to a family reunion while you're, while you're taking your exam. That's, that's one piece of advice. How hard was the exam? Medium. 
I would say medium hard. It was medium hard. Well, the A plus was split into two exams, right? Because it covers so much more material. Um, I didn't find that one to be too, too difficult. I think the network plus was harder than the security plus. So if you've passed the network plus, you can definitely pass the security plus, but it's different material. So, you know, and it depends on your experiences as well. I'm sticking with medium hard as my answer for how hard was the exam. When I was taking the exam, I, I went into it fairly confident because I'd studied quite a bit and I felt like I was going to pass. I, I got an 81% on one of Jason Dion's tests. And that's kind of like one of the, one of the markers for me is like, if I can get over an 80% on Jason Dion's test, I can probably pass the real thing. So I went in pretty confident and I'm taking this test and I guess it's the way the questions are written. Like they're written really well to the point where if you don't know the answer, it's really hard to, you know how there are people that say, I'm really good at taking tests. Well, I'm, I'm one of those people that says that sometimes. And like, you can generally use logic and process of elimination to figure out the test answers, even if you have no idea what the test is about. These tests are not like that, um, for the most part. They're, the test questions are written really well, where it's actually testing your knowledge of the subject matter. It's not just testing, are you a good test taker? I guessed on more questions than I would have liked, or at least I felt like I was guessing, and that caused my morale and confidence to just, to just do this over the course of the test. I was like, so by the end of the test, um, you know, there's a survey and it's like, tell us how long did you study? Um, why are you taking this test? And, um, what's your age? And I was just clicking through it like, uh, blah, blah, because I was so demoralized and I was convinced that I had failed the test. And I was just trying to get to the end of the screen where they show you your score. And I got to the end and I was like, you passed. By the way, I know some people are going to ask what score I got. It was a 791. Another question that I get sometimes on these videos is, uh, can I share some exam questions with you? The answer is indubitably no. But I've made a lot of other awesome videos that you guys can watch. Um, so check in the description and I'll link like the whole Security Plus playlist. I also have a Network Plus playlist. If you guys want to watch that, please enjoy. Something else people often ask about is the performance-based questions. Uh, it's really hard to know <laughs> how well I did on the performance-based questions because one of the unfortunate things about these exams is they don't tell you which questions you missed and which questions you got right. So I, I felt like the performance-based questions were similar to a lot of the other questions where I wasn't 100% confident in my answers, but I did my best and... I maybe got half of it right. I maybe got the whole thing right. It's hard to say. On the performance-based questions, I would say one of the best ways that you could study is honestly try to find some type of labs to do or do some real-life labs. Like if you have a firewall at home or if you can access some type of free like virtual machine and, and set up a firewall, find some type of practice questions that simulate performance-based questions. And if you want to see some easy examples, again, just go watch my Security Plus videos. I did I did one on performance-based questions and it has some great examples and they're from CompTIA. So you know that they're going to be relevant to the exam. The last thing I want to say to you guys is thank you so much for watching my videos and thank you for all of you that have, have subscribed. Uh, my goal is to reach a thousand subscribers and we're at 750. I enjoy making videos and you guys make it possible by actually watching my content. So I appreciate that. Um, I want to do different types of videos and I hope that it will still be interesting to you guys and you guys will keep coming back and watching. I want to do more like tutorials, DIY type videos. I tend to only have time to make videos on things that I'm actively learning and doing. Um, and so since I've achieved my first three CompTIA certifications that I had planned out, we'll see where we go next. I'm thinking uh, I want to do a home lab. I'm thinking I want to learn more about cloud services. I want to do more hands-on uh, hacking challenges like hack the box and try hack me. I do a lot of IT troubleshooting at work. Um, so I could make some videos about that. And I also want to, uh, I also work with a lot of, um, SAS, SAS at work. So I could do some videos showcasing some different SAS solutions. Um, so let me know what you guys want to see next. Um, I've pretty much finished my network plus series, my security plus series, and, uh, I'm probably not going to go back to those, but if you guys want to see some other types of videos, uh, let me know in the comments down below. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing and I'll see you next time. Bye.